everyone, it's me Shandy and you're watching Biology Nowadays. In this video, we will see classification, general characteristics and economic uses of gymnosperms, the members of the fourth group coming under plant kingdom. Whenever I think about gymnosperms, the first plant that comes to my mind is a beautiful Christmas tree. This Christmas tree is an example for gymnosperms. They will not form flowers or fruits, but form structures called cones. And within these cones, you will find the seeds. Gymnosperms are the primitive seed plants. Some examples of gymnosperms are the members of genus Cycus, Gingo, Pinus and Neetum. Gymnosperms were abundant in the Mesozoic era. However, today their numbers are decreasing. But still, they are dominant in the colder regions of the world. Gymnosperm seeds remain naked or in other words, they are not covered inside a fruit as in the case of a mango seed. As you know, mango seed is covered by a fleshy juicy part and an outer skin. This is because mango tree belongs to the group angiosperms. And angiosperms have structures called ovaries inside which seeds are formed. The fruit is actually the ripened ovary. Since ovaries are absent in gymnosperms, the seeds of gymnosperms are not covered. This feature is one of the main differences between gymnosperms and angiosperms. Since both gymnosperms and angiosperms form seeds, they are called spermatophytes or seed plants. The other plant groups, algae, bryophytes and pteridophytes, which don't form seeds, are called cryptogaps. The name gymnosperm is derived from the Greek word gymnos, meaning naked, and sperma, meaning seed. So, gymnosperm means naked seeds. In pteridophytes like Selaginella, we saw heterospory and also the retention and germination of megaspore into female gametophyte inside the megasporangia. Actually, these were the first steps of seed habit. But however, pteridophytes didn't form seeds. Whereas in gymnosperms, you see the completion of this phenomenon of seed habit through the formation of seeds. I know that you all are very familiar with the term seed, but do you know what is a seed scientifically? Let's learn about it. For that, first let us recollect this picture of the strobilus of the pterodophyte Selaginella. Selaginella is special among pterodophytes because it is heterosporous, which means that it produces two types of spores, microspores in microsporangia and megaspores in megasporangia. Microsporangia and megasporangia are seen in the same strobilus. Sporophylls or special leaves bearing microsporangia are called microsporophylls and sporophylls bearing megasporangia are called megasporophylls. Now let's move on to the gymnosperms. All gymnosperms are heterosporous, which means that they produce two types of spores, microspores and megaspores. Microspores are produced in microsporangia and megaspores are produced in megasporangia. Sporophylls bearing microsporangia are called microsporophylls and sporophylls bearing megasporangia are called megasporophylls. Microsporangia are seen on the lower side of the microsporophyll. Here is a microsporophyll of the cycus tree. What you see here is actually the lower side of the microsporophyll with microsporangia. Let's have a closer look at the microsporangia. Oh, these microsporangia are all open and they have released their contents already. It's okay. Here is a megasporophyll of cycus. And you can see the megasporangia. Inside the megasporangia, megaspores are produced. 
But the megasporangia in gymnosperms are different from that of Selaginella. In gymnosperms, the megasporangia are covered with a few protective layers called integuments. These megasporangia covered with integuments are called ovules. These ovules will become seeds later. You may remember that in Selaginella, microsporophylls bearing microsporangia and megasporophylls bearing megasporangia were seen in the same strobilus. But in gymnosperms, they are seen in separate strobili. The strobili in gymnosperms are also called as cons. So, the strobili or cons bearing microsporophylls and microsporangia are called microsporangiate strobili or male strobili or male cons. The strobili or cons bearing megasporophylls and megasporangia are called megasporangiate strobili or female strobili or female cons. The male and female strobili or cons may be present on the same tree as in the case of pinus. Here, the female con is bigger in size than that of the male con. If you check a longitudinal section of the male and female cons of pinus, you can see that the cons have a central axis around which microsporophylls or megasporophylls are arranged. The male and female cons may also be seen on different trees as in the case of cycus. But in cycus, the megasporophylls are not arranged around a central axis in a cone. Instead, they are loosely arranged at the stem apex that appears like a rosette. Sometimes it may look like a cone, but it is not a true cone. So, a true female cone is absent in cycus. Cycus plants have the largest ovules of the plant kingdom. So let's see the structure of a cycus ovule. The body of the ovule consisting of many cells is called nucellus. In other words, nucellus is the central part of an ovule. It is covered with three layers of protective layers called integuments. There is an opening called micropyle and a small chamber called the pollen chamber. Here is the close-up look of micropyle and pollen chamber. I will explain about these structures later. Now, let's check the microsporangia. Inside the microsporangia, the haploid microspores will germinate into male gametophytes called pollen grains. These pollen grains will later produce the male gametes or sperms. Each pollen grain consists of three cells, a prothallial cell, a generative cell and a tube cell. At this three cell stage, the pollen grains are released from the microsporangia. They are carried away by wind. In this video, what you see like a smoke is actually the pollen dispersal. Check out the link of this video in the description box below. This kind of massive pollen dispersal occurs during the spring season. Sometimes this causes allergic rhinitis or hay fever. The pollen grains carried away by wind will get trapped in a sticky drop called the pollination drop seen at the micropyle. Pollination drop is secreted by the ovules. This transfer of pollen from the main part of a plant to the female part of the same plant or another plant is called pollination. In almost all gymnosperms, as we saw in the video, wind plays an important role in the pollination. Such a kind of pollination by wind is called anemophily. Here, the pollen grains can travel with wind for miles and can withstand extreme drying. Now, the pollination drop dries out and the pollen grains are drawn into the pollen chamber of the ovule. The micropyle is closed. A tube called pollen tube starts to develop from the pollen grain. After a month of pollination, one cell of the new cellus gets differentiated into a megaspore mother cell. 
the megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis division to form four haploid megaspores. Among the four haploid megaspores, only one becomes functional. The other three megaspores will degenerate, in other words, dies off. After a long period of time, nearly one year, the functional megaspore undergoes mitosis division to form a female gametophyte. This female gametophyte is also called endosperm. Female gametophyte will produce female gamete or egg in the female sex organs called archegonia. Archegonia are seen at the micropylar end of the ovule. Sometimes two to eight archegonia are formed by the female gametophyte. By this time, in the pollen grain, which is in the pollen chamber of the ovule, the generative cell divides into a stalk cell and a body cell. Finally, the body cell divides to form two sperms. As you might have already noted, in gymnosperms, male sex organs or antheridia are not formed. The pollen tube carrying the male gametes or sperms grows towards the archegonia in the ovules. If the sperms are ciliated like in cycas and gingo, the pollen tube will discharge the sperms near the mouth of the archegonia and the sperms will move to the egg. But some gymnosperms like pinus and netum have sperms with no flagella or cilia. They move along the pollen tube to reach the egg inside the archegonium. The sperms and eggs of the cycas are the largest in the plant kingdom. Out of the two sperms, one fuses with the egg and the other sperm degenerates. In the same way, sperms from different pollen grains will fertilize the eggs in each archegonia. In this picture, I have shown the case of just one pollen grain. The sperm nucleus and the egg nucleus fuse to form a diploid zygote. In the case of algae, bryophytes and pteridophytes, there was a requirement of water for the sperms in the antheridia to reach egg in the archegonia. But in gymnosperms, one thing to be noted is that there was no requirement of water for the fertilization to occur. Pollen grains reached the ovule by wind and the sperms reached the egg with the help of the pollen tube. The zygote now secretes a cell wall and becomes an oospore. The oospore then develops into a young embryo inside the ovule. Since a single cycus ovule contains 2 to 8 archegonia, 2 to 8 embryos will also develop inside a single ovule. The phenomenon of development of more than one embryo inside a single ovule is known as polyembryony. Among the 2 to 8 embryos, only one embryo will reach maturity, others degenerate. All these changes that occurred after fertilization make the ovule turn into a seed. So, seed is basically a fertilized ovule. Seeds have many advantages. They are protected with many layers of cells. They can be dispersed by wind, water or animals. They can remain dormant till the conditions are suitable for germination. The food stored inside, that is the endosperm, can be used up by the embryo at the time of germination. When conditions are favorable for germination, the seed will germinate into a young diploid sporophyte which is the main plant body of the gymnosperms. Now you have learned a lot of new terms. Ovules, pollen grains, new cellars, pollination, polyembryony, and above all seed. Maybe it was a little bit difficult to grasp those things but we relaxed, we got over the most difficult part of gymnosperms. Okay, now let's proceed with the remaining part. Gymnosperms are vascular plants which show secondary growth or thickening. This means that the stem and roots of the gymnosperms will increase in diameter greatly after a short period of growth. 
But how does this happen? This is because during the secondary growth, inside the stem and roots, a great amount of secondary vascular tissues called secondary xylem and also secondary phloem starts to form and as a result the diameter of the stems and roots increase. Secondary xylem is basically the wood and phloem is the inner bark. Xylem has special cells called tracheary elements. Tracheary elements consist of tracheids and vessel elements. These are the actual water conducting cells. Among tracheids and vessels, tracheids are primitive when compared to vessels. They are not that advanced as vessels. They are elongated and narrower than the vessels. In pteridophytes and most of the gymnosperms, tracheids are the main water conducting cells. Vessels are absent in pteridophytes and most of the gymnosperms, whereas vessels are the main water conducting system in angiosperms. Now let's see about phloem. Phloem consists of special food conducting cells called sieve elements. Sieve elements consist of sieve cells and sieve tube members. Sieve cells are the only type of food conducting cells in pteridophytes and most gymnosperms. Whereas sieve tube members are the only type of food conducting cells in angiosperms. Sieve tube members are more advanced conducting cells. Let's see the classification of gymnosperms. The gymnosperms include four divisions. Cyclophyta, Gingophyta, Coniferophyta and Nematophyta. First of all, Cyclophyta. The members of this group are called cycads. Cycads are palm-like plants found mainly in the tropical and subtropical regions. They have unbranched stem. The leaves are pinnately compound. Their leaflets have thick cuticle, which is a waxy coating, and also sunken stomata. Stomata are small openings meant for gaseous exchange. Singular form of stomata is stoma. The opening and closing of the stomata are controlled by special cells called guard cells. The guard cells are normally found in line with the lower epidermis of the leaves. But in gymnosperms, the guard cells and the stomata are sunken. The thick cuticle and the sunken stomata help to reduce water loss. These adaptations help gymnosperms to withstand extremes of temperature, humidity and wind. Gymnosperms have tap roots, which means that their root system consists of one main root called the tap root and many smaller and shorter lateral roots. Cycus have some special roots called corolloid roots which grow upwards, not downwards, like the normal roots. These corolloid roots have various cyanobacteria, which fix nitrogen and help cycus to grow in nitrogen poor soils. Here, the green area is actually the cyanobacteria. Now, the second group, Gingophyta. An important member of this group is Gingo biloba, commonly called the Gingo tree. It is also known as the maiden hair tree because of the resemblance of its fan-shaped bilobed leaves to those of the pterophyte adiantum, which is commonly called as maiden hair fern. Gingo is a really a beautiful tree and I love to see it in the autumn season when its leaf color changes from green to yellow. Gingo biloba may be the oldest living seed plant and some botanists regard it as one of the wonders of the world. Gingo biloba, which is only found in the wild in China, is cultivated and protected across the world. Third class is the coniferophyta. The members are commonly called as conifers. Species of conifers can be found in almost all parts of the world, but they are mostly seen in the snow forest. A conifer called Araucaria 
can be seen in lower elevation and in warmer climates. Conifers have branched stem. Their needle-like leaves reduce the surface area. This reduces the loss of water. They are covered with a thick waxy cuticle and also have sunken stomata to conserve water. Roots of some conifers, for example pinus, have symbiotic association with fungi called mycorrhiza. Here, the white covering on the roots is the fungal hyphae. Mycorrhizal fungi will absorb water and mineral nutrients and improve the tree's mineral absorption capabilities. Now, the fourth group, Nitrophyta. The members of this group consists of members belonging to the three main genera, Nitum, Ephedra and Velvichia. The primary difference between nitrophytes and other gymnosperms is that the members of nitrophytes have silent vessel elements similar to those found in angiosperms. Because of this, nitrophytes were once thought to be the closest gymnosperm relatives of angiosperms. However, molecular studies showed that it is wrong. We already saw different groups of gymnosperms. Now, let's have a short look on the most important features of the plant group gymnosperms. They are the primitive vascular seed plants. They form naked seeds. The main plant body is diploid and sporophyte. Their leaves have thick cuticle and sunken stomata, which are adaptations to withstand extreme temperatures, wind and humidity. The roots are generally tap roots. They are heterosporous. They have male and female cones. They show polyembryony. Before we conclude, here are some economic uses of the gymnosperms. Gymnosperms provide large amount of timber for construction, packing, paper industry, plywood and particle board manufacturing. Cycus has palm-like leaves and so they are grown for ornamental purposes. The chemical turpentine used in paint and wood industry is prepared from the pine resin. Pine resin is a gum-like substance produced by the pine tree. Pine seeds are roasted and eaten as snacks. Ephedrine, a drug from a conifer ephedra, is used for respiratory ailments and asthma. And that's all for this video. Thank you for being with me and stay tuned.